I think we did it. I think it's on. In a second now, Michael Banana will be joining me. There he is. Let's get him in here. Oh. Michael Banana, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. You know, how was your, how was your weekend? Um, it was good. It was good. It wasn't, wasn't, you know, nothing special. Give me, give me a highlight. I went to the beach yesterday. Okay. It was nice. Okay. Yeah. I checked out a new little spot. Wasn't, wasn't the best beach area, but you, you know, got some the beach. It's the sun, some water. You know. That's right. And uh, I tried not to melt here in Texas. It's like 175 degrees. Dang. Yeah. No, it was like, it was probably like 110 over the weekend. Yeah. That once you get over 105, I feel like things start getting weird. <laughs> yeah. That is a word to describe it. <laughs> that is a word to describe it. Uh, they get uncomfortable. <laughs> Want to give a shout out to, to Emma. What's going on? Badger Nation. I hope you are uh, saying it wherever you are. And uh, let's jump in to the presentation for today. Uh, we've got a lot to cover. Let the games begin. Alrighty. So let's jump in to not the conclusion. Hold on. Let's jump in <laughs> to here we go. Okay, welcome to July's 2023 customer webinar. I had a lot of fun with Mid Journey, making some images on this one. Uh, so here's a badger hard at work at the computer. So the goal for today is to really learn better ways to study and analyze data for Amazon advertising using Ad Badger. A lot of the goals of Ad Badger is to help its users identify what decisions need to get made and how to use that data to improve results. Uh, so really, I'd love to focus on this topic, which is using AdBadger into a PPC workflow. Not only that, but using AdBadger allows you a special kind of workflow, uh, something that things that you cannot do inside Amazon or other tools that I know of. I know this week is Prime Day. We've got Prime Day coming up real soon, less than 24 hours. Um, we do have a podcast on it. I won't be covering Prime Day here on this webinar, but we have a lot of Prime Day content. So go to our YouTube channel or go anywhere where you look at, uh, listen to podcasts and you can find it there. Uh, we've done Prime Day content for a, a very long time. You know, last year we talked more data or data driven. The year before that, we've got Prime Day tips. 2020, we have Prime Day tips. 2019, we've got Prime Day tips. We've been talking about Prime Day tips for a very long time, uh, so we won't be talking about it here on this webinar. Uh, this is going to be much more focused uh, on our customer experience. So there's really two common scenarios as we get into this that you might experience with your Amazon PPC, where basically you open up your campaigns one month, and hopefully you don't have to wait till the end of the month to find this out, but basically you open up your campaigns and your campaigns went from bad performance to good performance or the flip, it went from good performance to bad performance. We're going to be talking about how to navigate both of these situations and whether or not your campaign is good today or it's bad today, you still have the exact same problem. With Amazon PPC and the way that we look at and interact with campaigns, it's very difficult to see around corners. It's almost like you're in a maze and you're just sort of stuck. You can only see what's right in front of you. And this creates lots and lots of problems. For example, let's say May, you had a 2.9 ROAS, and it's not good. You need to get over 3.5, right? So you log in and you're trying to navigate your campaigns. You're trying to figure out what to do. You listen to 50 episodes of the PPC Then podcast. You go to our Amazon PPC checklist and you go directly to the goal setting, goal tracking, improving ACOS section so you understand the strategy. You go in and you turn on Bids by Badger. And what do you know? In three weeks, your desk looks like this, uh, but you hit a 4.4 ROAS. That's a 53% improvement. Awesome, right? Dream case scenario. Terrific. However, you're feeling good. However, there's this sinking feeling of, okay, I made a bunch of different changes. 
what changes actually had the impact? And how do I summarize those changes? How do I wrap my head around that flurry of activity that I did? So again, back to the scenario. This happens whether you went from bad to good or good to bad. No matter what, you are sometimes left with a feeling of like, what actually happened? You know, even if you're moving from good to bad, let's say May was a 4.4 ROAS and then June got worse. Same kind of scenario. You have the same sinking feeling of what changes actually had the impact and how do I tag other people in and how do I get more help to analyze that data? And once I figure out what to do, how do I go in and take action quickly? This is perhaps the most common thing. And today we're going to be learning how to use AdBadger to navigate these scenarios. So how to do some really great analysis how to turn it into a really good action-taking tool so that we can monitor, track performance, take action quickly, find the important parts of the campaigns that you need. So we're going to solve this issue. We're going to be able to see around corners. We're going to be able to zoom out. So you know, this issue is so prevalent that it really does interfere with your workflow. And the way that people try to solve this problem the way that people try to see around corners, the way that people try to zoom out is they go one by one. So they're going into one campaign. They make some actions on a few keywords. Then they go back and they look at another campaign. They try to make actions. Then they go back to the top level. Then they go into another campaign. And they're just sort of going through really, really slowly. When instead, we're going to talk about how to use cohorts and save filters. They also don't identify trends. Um, what I mean by that is you might open up your account and see that it has a certain a cost and you don't really know what it was previously. You don't really know the story of what's going on. You tend to make snap judgments that way. Oh, this keyword's bad. I better turn it off or, oh, this keyword's good. I better give it more spend. And you're just not being able to connect the dots. The very best people are able to identify trends here. Uh, and then lastly, ad hoc reporting. I can't tell you the amount of people that I talked to them in January, I talked to them in February, talked to them in March, and every single month, they're looking at different things, they're analyzing their account differently, when really, you want to be able to look at your campaigns through a similar lens every time, that way you can spot trends and find out what to take action on so much faster. So using Amazon's default interface, it's hard to find issues. It's hard to find where to take action quickly. It's also hard to try to find, you know, where do I even dig in? For example, you might have hundreds and hundreds of campaigns. It takes you a very long time to sort of sift through everything. Uh, and it's also very easy to hide things this way. So if you go into your campaigns and you just say, show me my biggest campaigns in terms of A cost. Okay, this, a this campaign has a really high A cost, 400%. And yes, you should take some action. But there's probably campaigns that have a 30% ACoS and inside there are really bad search terms. So inside any campaign, even small ones where you're spending, you know, just $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 a month, there's hundreds and hundreds of different areas to look at. And unless you have a good workflow and how to find the important areas quickly, you're never going to be able to get your campaigns to the highest potential. So it's very, very easy to get stuck at this account level. So a lot of people do this inside the Amazon interface. They'll open up a camp, they'll open up one tab, dig into that campaign, go into another campaign, go into another campaign, and just sort of move one by one here. And it's really, really slow. And hopefully by the end of this, and hopefully no ad badger customers feel the need to do this again. So my promise to you is to really zoom out, to, to, to go from just sort of looking at what's right in front of you, be able to zoom out and learn techniques and learn the tools that we have here at AdBadger to help you see your campaigns like this uh, so that you can move through the maze a little bit easier. Uh, Michael Bonanno, have you ever done a <laughs> one of these like in-person mazes? I've never done anything um, that was actually like uh, hard to get through. I think I've only <laughs> done like some little... Yeah, Can't you're, it, but. you're a maze expert. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think I have a good sense of direction. There you go. Uh, where's, where's the sun setting? Yes, those <laughs> kinds of things. 
Um, so here is uh, someone who uh, works on our software. Uh, this is, uh, we have real badgers working on our software. Uh, so some of these features that I'm going to be talking about are going to be coming really soon here in Q3. Uh, some of them are going to be coming a little bit later in Q3. So I'd like us all to start thinking about optimizing PPC campaigns with this sort of mental model. I've used this a lot. I use this presentation as a chance to sort of frame that mental model, and I call it focus, find, and action. So we're basically going to be talking about how to focus in on what needs to get focused on, how to find the individual pieces of your account, and then how to take action on them quickly. So the first thing that I'll always say, you know, the first question that I always ask is, you know, are we trying, what are we trying to do in the account? Are we trying to boost sales volume? Are we trying to reduce a costs? Are we doing some kind of combination of all of the above? And then I try to ask like, well, how are we pacing? You know, are we going up or going down? Um, you know, how do we find the parts of the campaigns that are moving in the right direction or in the wrong direction? And then of course, quickly analyzing that data. And then finally, how do we take the right action? And we want to think in terms of buckets or think in terms of groups of items, like groups of keywords and groups of search terms. So step one, focus in on the right trajectory of your campaign. So, so many sellers will wake up have a high ACoS day, and then just want to turn off uh, turn off advertising. Uh, and I get it, right? Amazon advertising is really expensive. And when we have these days or these weeks uh, of above average ACoS, it can be very easy for us to just want to wholesale, turn everything off, pause Amazon advertising entirely. Um, so this is a really real situation. Uh, just last week, Elena from the Ad Badger team reached out to me and she's like, hey, can I get your insight on a campaign? Uh, and the first thing I did was this step. I focused in on what was the story of the account? Where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, and I wanted to address a lot of important questions. And as you think about your campaigns, this is how, this is the first step in doing this kind of analysis. So I'm gonna show you these questions and then we're gonna look at Ad Badger and how it helps answer these questions. So some really important things to know before you begin to start optimizing your campaigns, is this month better than the previous month? Is this week better than the previous week? That sort of time comparison is really, really useful at getting a pulse on things. Uh, I can't tell you the amount of times where, let's say an A cost was like 80%, and then it came down to 60%, but the person wants to get it to 50%. So we're trending really nicely in the right direction. Um, but if we only look at that, oh, my ACoS still isn't where I want it, I don't know that it's getting better. It's very easy for people to make the wrong decision. Like things are getting better, but they sort of just give up on things right then and there. So we want to know that. We want to know if the campaign's getting better or worse. Are we trending in the right direction? If it's trending in the right direction, that might mean, hey, let's not make a whole bunch of changes right now. Other questions that we might want to ha have is like, are there any campaign distribution changes? Meaning maybe my A cost went up because I'm doing more auto campaigns. You know, that kind of analysis can be really useful. Uh, did I launch more keywords? Did I launch more targets or did I launch more product ads? Knowing if you just, you know, maybe you increased your amount of keywords by 50%. So of course you're gonna have an increase in ad spend. And of course your A cost is gonna go up a bit. Am I spending too much on low converting search terms? Do I need to trim any fat? Uh, and of course, how am I doing week by week? What are the actual hard numbers uh, that I can look at? So we're not going to see any more screen caps from Amazon. Let's jump into Ad Badger here. So when you first log into Ad Badger, you are greeted with the advertising trends uh, or the marketplace snapshot. And the reason I like this is because it helps us do that first step. It helps us focus on what is going on with the account. Uh, I just wanted to break this down as a vital first step and then talk about how this page answers these questions. So the first thing that you'll notice are two time frames. Uh, by default, I think we drop you in there with the 30 versus 30. So like what's the most recent 30 versus the previous 30? Uh, and you can configure this to any real time period you want. Um, so you know what is last month versus the previous month? What's also really cool about this is as you use Ad Badger longer and longer, you're also able to access like multi-year analysis. Um, so, you know, 
Amazon sort of locks in some of that data when you first sign up and we can grab 60 or 90 days when, depending on the campaign type. Um, but as you're an Ad Badger customer for longer, this data begins to give you access to year over year analysis. So if you wanted to see, hey, what was my CPC for a certain campaign or how much did I spend on this keyword Q4 last year, you're able to tap into that. Uh, and you can sort of do some of that analysis here if you wanted to compare you know, June 2023 versus June 2022 for some really useful year over year analysis, which is really important, especially for seasonal businesses. Uh, for seasonal businesses, and most of us have seasonal trends, right? Like July is generally a slow month for e-commerce. You probably don't want to compare July versus June you probably want to compare July 2023 versus July 2022 to sort of get that pulse. So this opens up a lot and you can hear how I'm talking. I'm already unlocked levels of analysis you would have missed if you just opened up Amazon advertising. You know, you're able to do year over year analysis here, which you just can't do inside Amazon. Uh, you're able to sort of get that pulse of like, okay, before I start smashing things in my account or start blowing it up, let me actually see what did I actually do last year? What did I actually do last quarter? This kind of analysis can be super duper helpful. So you have your date, date comparison timeframes. You have some charts about how your, you know, your current number of clicks compared to your previous number of clicks. So you, so you have some nice visualizations there, but then right underneath that you have, you know, time frame A versus time frame B, and you can start to see different levels of analysis here. So in this sample uh, demo account, and we'll be looking at a lot of demo data today. You know, I can see that, oh, my spend went down, but my sales went up, meaning, and that means my A cost got better. I can see that I have a lot more view through sales. So already I can extrapolate some insight here. Okay, like I must have turned off spend in some of my underperforming areas. I probably dedicated more spend towards my very best areas. And that resulted in my A cost getting better. I can also see that I probably launched some sponsored display because now I have view through sales. So it's already giving me a level of analysis that's just quick, right? I'm getting a better snapshot. I'm getting a better pulse on things. Uh, I'm not going to be making a lot of misfires when I begin to optimize. Some other options you can here, you can do here. Uh, currently, it drops you off on an all campaigns view. Uh, you can click this button inside your account and maybe just view this for a certain portfolio. So if you wanted to know how you're doing in you know, portfolio A, you can just click this button and it'll open up a campaign or portfolio selector, allowing you to sort of view this data on a per portfolio basis. Again, it's all about getting a pulse on things quickly. Am I getting better? Am I getting worse? To what level? So that's sort of where you're dropped off in the beginning. So that begins to answer a lot of these questions. You know, is time frame A versus uh, time frame B? Am I getting better or am I getting worse? Uh, how about some of these other questions? Um, some of the other questions you might have are how many new keywords and campaigns have I launched? This can give you a really nice pulse too. Uh, let's say you go in and you know, you've know you launched a whole bunch of new keywords. You'll find out right here. Uh, let's say you created a whole bunch of new campaigns. You'll find out right here. Uh, let's say you've launched a whole bunch of new product ads. You'll find out right here. So what's the benefit of this area right here? Well, it tells you how many active things you have going. And the way that we define active is how many things got at least one click. So for example, if you've launched 100 new keywords and you see this here, so let's say I, I log in next week and it says 249 over uh, 149. It'll say I've launched you know, 100 new keywords. And then I'm able to say, oh, my ACoS went up because I launched 100 new keywords. Maybe I launched a whole bunch of new campaigns. So this kind of data, again, it's all about getting a pulse on your account. Where am I? Of course, my ACoS is up. It's probably not a performance thing. I just launched 100 new keywords. Having this level of analysis is just so helpful at getting a pulse on things so that we are focused when we go to take optimization time. Um, so super duper useful here. Another really useful thing is time versus time comparison on your spend distribution. So for example, uh, I can maybe see you know, let's say sponsored display generally has a lower conversion rate. So you can start to see, oh, I launched a whole bunch of sponsored display. Of course, my ACoS went up a little bit, 
that has a lower uh, conversion rate. So getting a pulse on you know how many sponsored products you have and how many sponsored displays you have and how much you're spending can be incredibly useful here, right? And if you were to do this inside you know Amazon, you'd have to go and click filter by you know type, show me how many sponsored products I'm spending on, and then you'd have to add another filter for auto and add another filter for manual. You know sum that up. So it's really helpful to get this kind of pulse on things. You might have to do some math. Uh, <clears throat> I love this table here because uh, it answers the question, do I need to trim some fat? Uh, this is also on our marketing dashboard. Uh, so it shows you how much am I spending a non-converting spend? How many of my search terms have zero orders? How many of my search terms have one order and two orders, three, four, and five plus orders? So this right away tells you how much non-converting spend uh, as well as one order, two order, three order, four order, five orders. And we actually just added a nice new feature. We added a log scale, uh, which highlights, really highlights the percent changes. So you can sort of see like, oh, okay, I spent this much on things with zero orders in the previous time frame, but I'm actually spending more on non-converting spend in this time frame. So it's, it's cluing you in. Oh, okay, now I'm informed of what actions to go take. I can see that this happened. And you can begin to piece together the dots. If you know, if I scroll up and I see that I launched 50 new campaigns, then I might expect to have a little bit more non-converting spend. And maybe I let it rest for a little bit until that stabilizes. So it's all about making the right decisions at the right spot. Week by week granularity. Uh, also on our dashboard, we have a breakdown. Uh, and in this breakdown, I really enjoy this because you're able to see things going week by week, uh, which is super duper helpful. So I, I can see specifically how much spend I'm spending and how that changes my ACoS. What's, but what's really cool about this is, you know, these are points on a graph, so you can see these visually, but I always like to go down and actually see this, uh, how the spend has changed periodically. So this shows you sort of time order, how your clicks and spend and CPC and sales have changed over time, which I really, really like. So I can see sort of like, oh, okay, we're spending a lot more this week. Oh, okay. Like that led to a lot more orders or, oh, we're spending a lot more. It didn't lead to new orders. I better go in there and pay extra attention to things without conversions. So just that one page, it gives you a pulse on things. It gives you a lot of data and a lot of insight quickly. And it prevents us from misfiring. It prevents us from taking the wrong action in the wrong spot. It prevents us from having an incorrect view of what our data is doing. So that's the focus. And so, so some of these are our analysis levels here. So most of the snapshot dashboard is available now. Now, Let's take a look at a new feature coming in quarter three, uh, which is the find. So what have we just done? We've answered a lot of the questions on the left side. You know, what is going on at the account level? But we also want to know very quickly and easily where these events have happened. And in order to do this, we had to rework our tables entirely. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, shortly. Um, but what we want to do is when we have a graph like this, and you know, you can see like, okay, spend went up over here and like this went down over here. Uh, or when we're looking at our dashboard that we just saw, you can see things fluctuating. The question becomes, well, where did these things fluctuate? And this is one of the things that I'm most excited for because it's really going to speed up your analysis and exactly find where to focus on. So coming up soon in Ad Badger, when you go to some of these views, you know, you can view all your campaigns, view all your targets, view all your campaign negatives or your search terms, whatever you want. The real question becomes, where did these things happen? You know, where are sales down? Where did I increase ad spend too much? Where is my conversion rate changing? All of these questions, you want to be able to zoom in now that you know it at the account level, you want to then zoom in and find specifically where these things happened. How common is this problem? You know, where you have time frame A over here, 
time frame B over here. And you just want to know what campaigns led to this better performance. It is sometimes a mystery for people. So you've got the trend. You're able to see that clearly. You have a pulse on the account of like why things are the way that they are. So you, you know the story, you know the trajectory. But what happens when you want to know these specific campaigns in which these things changed? This is incredibly valuable information. And ideally, you can understand too, well, what keywords changed? What products changed over this time frame? And currently, there's not a great way to find specifically where that happened. So in the coming months, we're going to be adding the power to view two time frames at once. So let's say in time frame A, the keyword has an 80% ACoS. You don't want to take action on that 80% necessarily. What you want to do is sort of just check in on that keyword and find out how it's performing over time. So maybe in time frame B, the keyword had an ACoS of 30%. Ah, and then you can see, I increased the CPC 100%. Let me go, you know, lower the CPC there. Or you might see another trend. Ah, okay. The keyword has an ACoS of 30% a month ago. And I can see that it only converts, you know, once or twice a month. So I'm just going to let it ride and leave it be. So we do this in the Bids by Badger algorithm. You know, we look at multiple time frames. Um, where we're looking at short terms versus long terms, and we're sort of combining that data for the most statistically significant bid value for you. But you're not able currently to see these time frames yourself. So you can make decisions on, hey, instead of just looking at the last 30 days for a keyword, what if I want to tack on the previous 30 days? What if I want to see how this campaign was doing, you know, four weeks ago? So coming up, and this is just a mock up here, so this isn't final. Coming up, when you go to your date selector, you'll be able to see soon a compare button. And this compare button will open up new views into your data that are gonna help you zoom in specifically on what campaign or keyword or product ads had the biggest changes. So very similar to what we saw on the snapshot dashboard where you're just sort of picking two timeframes. Imagine you log into your campaigns and you, know, you see some spend distribution. Okay, like this campaign spent $10, this campaign spent $10, this campaign spent nine, $19. But what did it spend last month? Imagine you were able to see how much it was spending last month. Ah, okay. Now we can see that this spent, I spent you know, $5 last month and I spent $10 more this month. And then you'd be able to see, oh, okay, I can see the spend changing over time. I can see that I'm scaling my campaigns. Now, all of a sudden, you're able to make better decisions on this campaign. You sort of know, oh, okay, this is probably, you know, this is new ad spend. How is the new ad spend doing in terms of ACoS? Did my ACoS change during this time frame? So just think about how powerful this level of analysis is. We started up top with the dashboard to sort of, sort of get a pulse on things. And now we're in the ad manager finding specifically where things have changed. I'm very, very excited for this workflow. So... Imagine what you can do with this. You know, what campaigns or keywords or product spent more or less? Which ones had the biggest ACoS jump? You know, did I have a product have a really big conversion dip? Maybe it's a new competitor. Maybe I got a bad review somewhere. You know, is an auto campaign running away with budget? Uh, what keyword I should be focusing on because it has a, I need to give it a lower bid. Why did clicks for a, a star product fall, you know, post prime date? There's so many things that you can do once you have this information, I have the high level, I focused in on the dashboard, and now I'm zooming in to find exactly what is up with each individual piece of my account. Really, really powerful stuff. So sort of like bye-bye to this sort of like singular view, this mono view, where you can't really tell what's happening. Uh, and I'm really, really excited to unlock that uh, time frame. So I'm super stoked about that. Uh, and now you might be sitting there saying, uh, hey, but what about some of Ad Badger's current limitations? Uh, you know, what about our tables? You know, we're currently limited. If you log into Ad Badger, you're sort of limited to 25 or 50 rows at a time. Well, I'm very excited about this uh, next state, this next evolution of Ad Badger. So when you log in to Ad Badger and you look at keywords, you see something that looks like this. And as we're sort of going through this presentation, we're going from the focus, get the account summary, find, find exactly where the changes happened. And now we're in the action taking stage. And in order to take action 
really quickly and really effectively, you need some really powerful tables. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, th these are our current tables, and they're pretty good. And what you see here, uh, when I look at this, uh, I never really love these tables. They're good, but I was never in love with them. So today we're going to be talking about tables that I do love, that I'm very excited about, that we're all very, very excited about. Uh, the first thing that we solved was when you look at this and you were to count the number of sort of cells here, you know, you have your title row, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine by three, right? So this is the am amount of keywords that I can see at a single time. So I can see three, three keywords, three campaigns. If I were to scroll to the right, I might forget what keyword I'm looking at, right? It's kind of like managing your campaigns with three rows, right? Something like this. So imagine if we were to download this and look in a spreadsheet, this is the amount of equivalent data that we can get. So I am in love with our new tables, which brings us to action. And I'm very, very excited about this. We're all very excited about this. We've all worked super hard on getting these tables really, really strong. So action time. Now that we know where to go take action, we're going to talk about getting it done faster with Ad Badger. So essentially, our tables have been rebuilt from the ground up. It solves a lot of these old issues we were dragging around in terms of speed, in terms of viewing large data sets, and in terms of getting it done, like changing 500 bids at once. You're able to do that uh, coming very, very soon. So they've been rebuilt from the ground up. Here's a visual representation of how the old tables feel. You know, pretty majestic. You're, out, you're going for a walk in the forest to the new tables which are going to allow you to, to really claw through any data that you want really quickly. <clears throat> Look at this guy. Beautiful. Uh, I've even broke out fancy wear because my personal vision, I've always wanted uh, our tables to be super fast and furious. I've always, I've always wanted these two things. I've wanted search term analysis to go like this. I want to view sponsored products, sponsored brands, sponsored display search terms, put it all into one report apply a save filter. I don't know, clicks over 20, no orders, add these as negatives in one button push done in 30 seconds. So much faster than going to Amazon, clicking around, downloading a report for sponsored products, downloading a report for sponsored brands, downloading a report for sponsored display, insanity. Uh, and then editing that spreadsheet and like creating a bulk file or going, it's just insane. I've always wanted that. Bid optimization, automate it. You know, you can automate it with Bids by Badger, but, you know, some people like to be manual. So, you know, imagine you're just able to view all keywords, keywords, orders over five, increase bids by 10%, done in 30 seconds. So I want to say it's here. And, you know, I, I, I typed in, put lightning coming out of my eyes. And this is what, this is what came up. Uh, so let's talk about tables. Coming up in a few, uh, I don't know the exact time frame, but coming up in July, you're going to be getting tables. Uh, and this is how I have been optimizing my tables. I've been playing with these tables for quite some time. I'm very excited about them. So the first thing that you'll do when you open up these new tables is click this button right here. And what this button will do for you is allow you to select how you want to view your data. The comfortable is kind of like they are right now. Standard is a little bit more rows of data at a time. I'm a data junkie. So I'm trying to see all the rows that I can possibly see in a fail swoop. So I can create views that look like this. So it's, it's sort of like, I mean, compared to where we were, nine, nine columns by three rows. I mean, currently we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 columns uh, multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Uh, that's 19 times 24. So we're going from 27 viewable cells at a time to 456. It's insane. It's This is such an upgrade. It's lightning coming out of your eye. That's, it's that's lightning coming out of my <laughs> eyes. This is so crazy here. Um, so... I like the I like the uh, the most dense data. Now you can spread this out. If this looks a little overwhelming, uh, oh Dan, you just wait, Dan. 
Um, so you can start to see tables like this. Also cluing you in here, uh, polishing up. Let's see in a couple of minutes what we can see with these uh, check boxes in just a little bit. Another thing that has been fixed with our new tables is pagination, which is uh, viewing stuff like this. So currently I use Ad Badger in rows of 25. I think most people do rows of 25. And it makes it really hard if you go into your search terms and say, show me all my search terms with no orders and you've got a thousand of them, it's impossible to go 25 at a time. So now you can comfortably, and I've been using this, you know, for a while, 500 rows loads magnificently. Uh, we're going to see some samples of it in a couple, couple of minutes here. So you can start to view your data in rows of 500, uh, which is amazing. So I love, love, love being able to see this. So imagine you're here, right? You, you have, and you're just able to scroll. You're like, yeah, look at all these rows that I'm able to just access uh, as opposed to like going to the bottom of 25, clicking next, waiting. Um, so yeah, 500 rows now. Also added on top of the campaign uh, or, or on top of any column now, any column now, you will see this li these little dots a menu for every column, sort of reminiscent to like if you're in a spreadsheet, you can go to any column and begin to sort stuff. Uh, when you click this, you're opening up some options. So you can start to pin stuff. So you can pin stuff to the left, you can pin stuff to the right, uh, you could of course sort it, and you can bring up a filter for that specific column. So again, just sort of speeding things up. So no more like scrolling to the right and then forgetting what keyword you were looking at. It'll be sort of be pinned here for you. Uh, we've also added a sort of column search box to customize your column view. So you can see here, you know, I'm going through, I'm looking at different options, uh, but what if I just want to search for something? So if I just type in bid, it brings up all the columns uh, that are related to bidding. So I can sort of apply that, uh, which is really nice. So I can sort of customize my columns a lot, lot faster than I could previously. So I can pin stuff, I can sort things, uh, I can find exactly what columns I'm looking for, really enriching the experience here. So here's a sample uh, of me. I pinned the campaign name to the left and I pinned the campaign, um, and then I pinned the search term to the right. So I have my data in the middle here. So I loved this view of just letting me like, box my screen and for all the relevant information. So I'm like, I'm viewing my search terms. I know what campaign they're in at all times. And I can sort of sift through this data any which way I want. I love this view. Uh, it's really, really cool. Um, and I could do this with more, more than just these two columns, I'm sort of on a laptop size screen right now, but I really enjoyed this view. Um, and again, from here, I can sort or filter any of these rows, uh, which is really cool. So when you get here, and let's say you're looking at your search terms, uh, when you get here <laughs> and you get to your search terms, you're able to then, you might have a list of a thousand search terms, right? What do I do with all these search terms? How do I actually do anything with them? Or how do I find the relevant stuff? I tell everyone on every call, you gotta get your saved filters. Um, I'm going to show you how to get some saved filters in a second here. But really, when you're in Ad Manager, part of the power is the saved filters. So when you go and you view every search term for every campaign type all at once, and you set up this table, you then want to, well, just show me my buckets of performance or my cohort of performance. So some easy filters to think of, like you might want three to five. If you want more, maybe you have a filter for finding awful performers, bad, fair, good, best performance. Uh, or you can simplify this and just do bad, good, best. Or you might have some areas of focus filters. So you can say, show me all my search terms in portfolio A. Show me all my search terms in portfolio B. Again, it's just sort of shortcutting you immediately to the data that you need really, really fast. So 
There's a couple different ways to access filters. You can click on the menu. Uh, you can click on the menu within the column, and again, any column will bring this up. So if you wanted to filter for impressions or clicks or ACOS or whatever, uh, I'm going to do campaign in this case. Uh, or you can also click uh, all the filters up here. And you'll notice here that we have a campaign filter that uh, we're going to be rolling out, which is campaign contains. Uh, so you can just type in shoes and see all your campaigns with shoes, uh, which is really great. Um, so it's just like, oh, I want to find just a group of campaigns that have that particular word in them, uh, which I really, really like. Um, so you can stack sort of certain stuff with performance. So I can add to this filter, show me all my campaigns that contain the word shoes with an A cost over 50%. And then that's just saved. And the next time I log on, it's right there for me. This opens up the opportunity for working with the team. Oh, once a month, go and, go and log in and find all my campaigns with shoes that have an A cost over 50% and maybe lower the budget, you know, 10% or something like that. So what's really cool about this is I wanted you to be able to find anything anywhere. So primary filters, when you look at, uh, when you look at campaigns, campaign name contains or doesn't contain, you know, looking at campaigns, having a campaign filter. But what about when you're looking at your keywords? I do have a typo here. When you're looking at your keywords, can you say, show me my keywords from portfolio A? Show me my keywords from campaign A, B, C, D. So you're able to do these secondary filters that are filtering other stuff other than the things that you're looking at. So view all search terms. Only show me my search terms for a certain portfolio. And of course, the basic performance filters like A cost over 80 or any number-based filter. So I'm really, really excited to, to sort of play with those. Um, so again, just some ideas. Maybe you create a low data filter, clicks less than 10. Or maybe you create a high A cost filter, A cost over 50%. If you're wondering what filters you should have, definitely just write in. Uh, and the power here is save your filters. Uh, save your filters. So here I am creating a A cost over 50%. Name it, call it high A cost. Uh, that way, the next time you go here, you can just go to saved filters and imagine how creative you can get with your filters. You can say sort of like a cost over 50%, clicks over 20, orders less than 10 in portfolio A. You don't want to keep on recreating that every time you log in. So just have that as a saved filter. That way you can go take action on the buckets that you want to take action on. So your homework is to definitely begin to think of these filters, create some filters, four super easy ones, high A costs, low clicks, high orders, clicks with no orders. Some basic filter homework for you here. Now, I wanted to, to contrast the experience. So let's say you go in Amazon and you go to a certain ad group and you're looking at that ad group and then you're like, hmm, I actually want to go look at another campaign. I want to see how this campaign is doing in its auto campaign. Or how do I see all the campaigns with this keyword in it? Like being able to jump around super quickly was a key thing for Ad Badger. So if you're looking at your keyword data, you can click on the keyword and see keyword history. You can click on the campaign and go into that campaign. You can then, you can also click on the ad group and go into the ad group, or you can click on the portfolio and go to the portfolio. So it allows you to jump anywhere at any time, and you'll see this on the targets or the search terms, you'll see this in a lot of places, just allowing you to jump anywhere. You know, we have view all ad group keywords. So I love view all ad group keywords because what an underrated feature. How do I view my negative keywords for every ad group in my account? It's really hard to do, uh, but we have that. So when you're looking at your view all negatives, being able to jump anywhere to go into the ad group and then maybe remove some or add some, super valuable. We also have super search up top, which allows you to jump anywhere. Um, so you expand that sort of top thing that says super search, and then you can just jump in anywhere. You wanna jump to a portfolio or jump to campaigns, uh, you can go ahead and do that really quick. You can even jump into a certain ad group and then boom, you're inside the ad group. So being able to jump anywhere, key feature of ad manager. And we've highlighted the tables. We're still focused on the focus, find, action. 
So we talked about new ways to take action and find what you want. And then, of course, it comes time to take action. And no longer do you have to do stuff in like rows of 25 at a time. You know, if you want to take action on 100 things, you have to repeat it four times. If you want to take action on 1,000 things, good luck. Now you can really do stuff so much faster. So let's take a look at a, simp a sample workflow. You want to find new negatives or find new positives. You want to take bulk action on search terms. And you might be wondering, hmm, uh, you know, the first thing I want to say is our positive and negative keyword nightly hunt can automate this for you. Uh, whether you want to find new negatives or find new positives, we can automate it for you. Uh, but sometimes you just want to maybe fine tune things or you want some manual control, you know, for whatever reason. So let's say you're viewing all your search terms and you want to find high A cost things. And I found ridiculous search terms with an A cost of 500 to 550%. This is a demo account, so the data is a little wonky. So I'm finding super high A cost things. I found 245 of them. I'm going to go ahead and view all 500 rows. It's pretty darn snappy. Uh, I have my sort of column filter set up. I go to my bulk actions and I can go to bulk uh, add negatives. And then what I see here are some eligible and ineligible components. So it's basically doing logic for you, telling you, oh, I can add these as negatives. I can't add these as negatives. Um, so it's sort of doing that live logic of like, oh, you can't add negative targets to a keyword ad group, or you can't add keywords to a uh, product targeting ad group. So it's sort of doing that logic for you. And then it's going to give me a report at the end of it of what I was able to add, what got added, that sort of confirmation report. So being able to add hundreds of new negatives or hundreds of new positives or fine tune exactly what negatives or positives you want to do in bulk, potentially hundreds at a time, uh, was never possible in AdBadger before. And it is, it's coming soon. Um, this is all Q3 stuff. Some of this will drop uh, in early July, maybe uh, this week. Some of it will drop over the course of July, uh, later July. So I love this workflow. So imagine some of the capabilities here where you say, hey, show me all my keywords with less than five clicks. And imagine there's 500 of them that you just want to boost up really quick. Uh, this will allow you to do that in seconds. Uh, and I'm so stoked about it. So conclusion. Stop viewing your campaign data like this one tiny piece at a time. It's so hard to navigate campaigns this way. And so many people, like 90% of people that I meet are doing this. They log in, they look at one campaign, they look at one ad group, they look at a set of keywords at a time, and they're missing 90% of their campaign. Uh, what this allows you to do, all this workflow, is it allows you to really get a pulse on your campaign focus on where you are in time, find actually what to do, and then go take action on it super fast. Uh, focus, find, and then take action. Uh, so your homework, be on the lookout for a lot of these updates coming in July. Uh, be sure you're subscribed to our newsletter. We often talk about it there. Uh, begin to think about this workflow. You know, Do your high-level analysis. Zero in on areas that you need. Take action. Use those safe filters and bulk actions. Uh, I would also like to say, and it looks like uh, maybe Samuel's already talking about some of this stuff. As you have suggestions, definitely just write into us. Uh, we're moving through things faster than we ha ever have before. Um, so, it's, so I want that feedback. If you want other metrics on the marketing dashboard, let us know. If you need more columns or different filters, definitely let us know. Um, but your homework here is to really begin to think about this workflow and create those saved filters. Uh, so that you can start navigating things super fast. Um, Michael Bonanno. I like it. I it's like pretty, it. It's pretty sick. It's like, it feels like a different app for sure. Snappy. Got to get snappy. It feels like a different app. Um, so, yeah. People are liking it. People are liking it in the comments section. So, I'm itching. You, you know, it's been really uh, like we've been using it internally here for a little bit. Uh, and it's, I'm so excited to get it in people's hands. Um, you know, Clement, it, it feels, it feels like a big leap forward, uh, for sure. It feels like a different app.
I'm very excited for people to start playing with it, doing those bulk actions. Uh, I think what Dan's mentioning here, community filter list is like uh, just a whole bunch of saved filters, I think is what we're saying. Just like that anyone can tap into. Pretty interesting. Uh, and yes, Dan, you can definitely filter out your single keyword campaigns now using some of those filters. So yeah, so a lot of these are like really neat ways to navigate through your campaigns. Uh, couldn't be more excited about it. <sighs> good stuff. Michael, how do you feel? Feeling really good. Is it time for some Q&A? Should we do some Q&A? <clears throat> uh, maybe. Yeah, if there's any questions, <laughs> comments, or concerns. So it's going to be a good July. Some stuff releasing. It's going to be a game changer. Um, you know, I'm really excited. I talked to uh, Nick, our CTO, many hours a week, and we're just going to be seeing this stuff happen more and more frequently. Um, so like down the pipeline, July is really all about tables, just improving tables, being able to navigate things super fast, being able to get your levels of analysis super fast. Um, you know, so many times people over-optimize or under-optimize their account. So like they over-optimize, meaning they are taking the wrong action on something. So like if you have a keyword that's 80% a cost and you shut it down or you reduce the bid a lot without knowing, Hey, last month it was 30% and nothing changed. This keyword just jumps up and down a lot. If you make changes there, that's the example of over optimizing and under optimizing where, you know, maybe they take action on the top three campaigns, but then miss you know, their bottom 80% of keywords just because they didn't bubble up big enough. Um, so I think this solves a lot of that. So I think people will just straight up get better results easier with sort of this, this workflow. Uh, anyway, I think we can call it there, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, contact us. If you have questions, ad badger customers can book calls, you know, they, they can get one-on-one -on -one office hours, uh, with me and the rest of the PPC team. Um, if you're somehow watching this and you're not a customer, they can contact you, Michael. What's a good, what's a good way for people to contact you? Michael B at adbadger.com. Just send, just send him chat. an email. Hit me up. <laughs> yes. Just send him an email. Um, and with that, I hope everyone has a great prime day. I hope everyone has a fantastic week and everyone else. I'll see you inside the Badger Den.